to another episode of Manhood Academy Debate Criticism. we go over the pros and cons of how this debate developed and what were the good things and what were the educational things we can learn from this format. My hosts, my co-hosts today are Chewy and Blue. Welcome, Chewy and Blue. Hello! Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so we're covering the Piers, the Alex Jones versus Piers Morgan debate on gun control. It's on CNN, Cat Herder News Network. Let's start it off. Let's see. Uh, we're going to talk about the good things and bad things about the debate, the pros and cons of what you thought made this a good debate and a bad debate. And let's uh, start off. We'll just hear a little bit, and you guys chime in whenever you like. There's an issue you know I care passionately about. So here is my position, loud and clear. I'm in favor of a oh, nationwide sorry. ban on military-style semi-automatic assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. I want to close the gun show loopholes and require private dealers to run background checks on buyers at gun shows. I'd like to see the president increase federal funding for mental health treatment for all Americans who need it. I think these are entirely reasonable reactions to the outrages that have occurred in America over the last few months. But tonight, I'll go head to head with a man who actually wants to deport me for having these very... Okay, e- let's start off. Number one, what's the, what's, the good, what's the good thing you did in this debate right off the bat? Piers Morgan is introducing the debate. He's uh, stating his position. And? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes. He was very clear on his position. He uh, had, you know, certain points on what he thought would, uh, you know, what people should do in, in terms of gun control, and he's clear. Yeah, he stated his position in the affirmative. He didn't say, I don't believe we shouldn't do this. He said, here's what we should do. So right off the bat, he had the accountability, the balls to state his position in the affirmative. And this is very difficult to do for somebody, uh, for anybody who holds a position, is to state their view because they become accountable to what they state in the affirmative in the positive sense, meaning I believe in this and not I don't believe in this position because there's a countless number of positions not to believe in, almost an infinite number of positions not to believe in, but only one position to believe in, one position you consider correct, right, functional, etc. So it's good to state this position in the affirmative. A position that is a functional position only shines under critical scrutiny. It isn't undermined or isn't worried about being criticized by outside parties that are even trying to attack it hostily. So if your position is functional, you should be able to state it in the affirmative and Welcome criticism, welcome public scrutiny of your opinion. So he's debating Alex Cross here. And over 104,000 Americans apparently agree with him. That's coming up. Pierce, I can't say uh, how much I agree with your opinion and what you've stated previously. I appreciate you having your First Amendment right, and I am I am glad you're speaking out because that's exactly what we need. Anyone who's watched this sh- Okay, so he's thought, he just interviewed, he showed a short clip where he interviewed... Um, one of the uncles of the Aurora shooting victims talking about Pierce exercising his First Amendment, right? So, over the past few weeks, I've taken a pretty strong stand on guns in America. It's not escaped the notice of supporters of gun rights, and it's led to a petition on the White House official website, no less. It's entitled, and I quote, Deport British citizen Piers Morgan for attacking Second Amendment. Take a look. More than 104,000 people have signed it so far. And joining me now is one of the people behind the petition, Alex Jones. He's host of the Alex Jones Show. Welcome to you. Pierce, thanks for having me. Why do you want to call me? Well, we did it as a way to bring attention to the fact that we have all of these foreigners and the Russian government, the official Chinese government, Mao said political power goes out of the barrel of a gun. He killed about 80 million people because he's the only guy that had the guns. So we did it to point out that this is globalism and the mega banks that control the planet and brag that they've taken over in Bloomberg, AP, Reuters, you name it, brag that they're going to get our guns as well. They've taken everybody's guns but the Swiss and the American people. And when they get our guns, they can have their world tyranny. While the government buys 1.6 billion bullets, armored vehicles, tanks, helicopters, predator drones. Okay, so right off the bat, he's stating his position, and then he's getting into all these, uh, I guess, uh, peripheral issues that have to deal with the position. But he's more like a, almost making like an ideological statement about all his views all at once. Um, I guess it's somewhat helpful to understand his position and where he's coming from and why he feels uh, it's important for to protect the uh, Second Amendment uh, to the Constitution, the right to bear arms. But uh, he, he's, it's almost like he's shotgunning and stating every p- position possible. I like mashed potatoes. I'm against veg- veganism. So he's stating everything all at once instead of staying on a clear line of thought and uh, defending one clear position to start off with. He's definitely uh, lifting uh, Piers, uh, what's his name? Morgan? Pierce Morgan. Morgan yeah. with uh, a lot of information. Yeah. Almost as to uh, confuse him. Um, it would have been better if he would just say uh, something like, 
um, you know, uh, we, should, we, we need to keep our weapons because of fear of tyranny. And right, so he needs to crystallize his position rather than obviously it with all these other, uh, you know, convoluted issues that are these other things that it's almost like he memorized all these facts and he's bringing all his positions together and he's using this as a soapbox opportunity rather than in a, a debate where he's going to challenge his opponent's position and defend his own position. Schuster. It's just, well, it, it just, uh, he's just like a deluded, um, he's just like kind of throwing, I hate like when people say like, like word bomb or like, um, like when you get to a test and you kind of like write down every single thought you had when you're studying for a test, but it right. kind of seemed like that. It's like he's writing every answer yeah. in the essay versus sticking to the answering the question. Exactly. Okay, let's keep going. Armed now in U.S. skies, being used to arrest people in North Dakota. The Second Amendment isn't there for duck hunting. It's there to protect us from tyrannical government and street thugs. Take the women in India. Your piece earlier on CNN I was watching uh, during Anderson Cooper's show didn't tell you that the women of India have signed giant petitions to get firearms because the police can't and won't protect them. The answer well, is, fun, hey, fun. wait a minute, I have FBI yeah. crime statistics okay. that come out a year late, 2011. 20-plus percent crime drop in the last nine years. Real violent crime because more guns means less crime. Britain took the guns 15, 16 years ago. Tripling of your overall violent crime. True, we have a higher gun violence uh, level, but overall mugging, stabbings, deaths. You, those men raped that woman in India to death with an iron rod four feet long. You can't ban the iron rods. The guns, the iron rods, Pierce didn't do it. The tyrants did it. Him okay, so this is a, this is a good point he's making already here. Is that he's saying what a lot of people say is that the gun, you know, the slogan we always hear is guns don't kill people, people kill people, and he's correct in the sense that, um, you know, if you throw a knife, that's just a primitive gun. So they're banning projectile weapons. When really, it's the criminal intent that is operating the weapon that is making it a bad thing. Like, you could stab somebody with a knife. You could hit somebody with a baseball bat. Even those these uh, things might not be intended for that. But, uh, you know, just the fact that you can throw um, throw a knife at somebody, that's a projectile weapon. Are we, you know, do we ban knives now? Uh, do we ban fists? If fists can, you know, you could beat a man to death with your fists. You could kick him to death. Do we ban feet? So he's making the position, or he's uh, trying to draw a parallel here that, you know, the intention is... What is most important is addressing the fact of why we need the first, why we need the guns in the first place to protect ourselves from tyrannical governments, and then uh, the the flaw of trying to ban. He, Pierce is trying to make this, and a lot of people, um, you know, on the in the liberal media, CNN, etc., are trying to force this position on us that, or I'm sorry, they're trying to answer it in a situational way, meaning, like I brought the example last time we tried to uh, when we first started examining the, the debate. Um, let's say they develop new technology with a laser where they just have a laser beam and they can uh, cut you in half from 30 feet away, just a distance, right? It's just a one single laser. That's not a, you know, that's not a uh, projectile weapon. That's not a semi-automatic wep uh, automatic weapon. That's not a uh, automatic weapon. It's a laser. It's a different technology. So now we got to make a new law banning lasers. So you can see the absurdity of the position here. If we're, this guy's always trying to answer the situational position, which will always change, versus understanding the principle behind the position. The reason why we have the Second Amendment in the first place. It's not really a right to bear arms. The Second Amendment is really saying a right to protect yourself from people that want to take away your liberties or they want to take your life, even, in the most extreme cases. Just touch, to touch up on your point. <laughs> Hello. Just wondering if there was any uh, anybody else in the audience. Yeah, to touch on your point, um, I mean, in society and people in general, at least from what I see and experience, are very short-sighted. And they're always trying to solve a situation by situation. You have people all the time coming in the chat room saying, uh, um, you know, I'm having problems with my girlfriend yesterday. She kicked me out of the house or did this or did that. Um, always focusing on the situation. And even if you solve that situation, like they're trying to solve it by banning semi-automatic weapons, there's always going to be another situation. Uh, yeah, a slightly advice. different situation you never seen right, before. slightly different. And then they're going to come back and ask advice on that or make a lot of – like in the chat room, people come and say, uh, well – uh, I got dumped by my wife because of this situation, or she's cheating on me because of this situation. And she was walking home with this guy, and she started cheating with a coworker. What do I do in this situation? So there, if you solve that situation, they're going to come back with a thousand more different situations because they don't realize it's understanding the principle of the relationship and why the relationship works or doesn't work. That's what's important, not these individual situations, which are really symptoms of bad relationship management. If you ban the semi-automatic semi rifle or an automatic rifle, you're addressing a situational weapon. But, again, technology will change. There will be new types of weapons, and then we'll have new types of laws. We'll have a new type of debate. 
But again, it's only because we're addressing situational things that change all the time. We're not addressing the heart of the issue, which is why we even have the Second Amendment in the first place. You know also mentioned that uh, 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 gun violence, not gun violence, but um, gun murders, if you want to mm-hmm. call it that way, uh, have gone down. And he uh, introduced some evidence, he said there was an FBI statistic, he even put out a piece of paper in front of Piers Morgan saying, these are the statistics. So right. That, uh, yeah, that favors him. I, here's the thing that I don't like about statistics, because you know uh, the way Pierce is going to use statistics. You'll see in the in the bait in a second how he's going to he's going to ask this guy a question, a specific question, which will demand a specific answer. But the way Pierce asks the question, he's going to say how many uh, deaths were uh, were gun related in you know in the United States versus England, which doesn't have guns. It'll be 35 versus like 11,000 or something along those lines. And you'll say oh, that's shocking, that's outrageous. 11,000 gun deaths uh, versus 35 gun deaths. We obviously need to ban guns, right? If that's the only information you hear. But you don't realize all the other crimes that are committed, you know, with bats and things and the crime rates. And so, the, again, it's like these, this, uh, this, you know, you're taking a statistic and you're isolating it and removing all context from it. And you can make it say whatever you want it to say. That's why I hate arguing with statistics. They can be so misused. Um, they, people can be easily misled. And also the st- statistics a lot of times are different depending on who you ask. And in various circumstances, they become different. So uh, it's better to understand the rationale behind the point. The, That's a good point. But my point is it's very hard to not introduce a, st- a statistic right? if, if it uh, benefits your argument. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I'm guilty of that. In one of the debates, I remember I, you know, when I was talking to that uh, feminist, I said over half the marriages end in divorce and more than uh, the majority of the relationships – I didn't cite a direct statistic, but the majority of the relationships are uh, – are, are dissolved by women. You know, women initiate the majority of divorces. That's a, t- a statistic. Um, maybe I didn't use an exact number, but I'm still harping on th- the statistic rather than concentrating the actual argument. So yes, I totally agree with you that uh, it's it's very easy to to rely on statistics when it works in your favor. But in a in a perfect debate, like if my opponent just said, "Look, uh, even I would introduce this." If my opponent was going to introduce statistics that I didn't know about, I would say, "Look, I want to remove all statistics. Statistics that support my side. If there's a majority of statistics that will support my side." I don't want to rely on them. I want to rely on argumentation, something that's self-evident, that makes sense to us if we can rationally talk talk about it. I'd rather – I'd feel much more confident in that because I know other people can agree with the logic and see the reason, the rationale behind my position versus relying on statistics, which are not trustworthy off the bat. So uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to rely on statistics myself even if they're supporting my argument. I'd rather just start off the debate and say, look, let's throw all statistics out the window. Let's argue your, ra- your position rationally aside from the statistics. Let's argue the principle of your position. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? That's why you're going to fail, and the establishment knows, no matter how much propaganda, the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. My family in the Texas Revolution... Okay, is- now he's getting super-duper emotional here, and he's, he's, uh, he's undermining his argument because... You'll see in a second, he's going to introduce a, a fight. <laughs> he's going to challenge Pierce to a physical fight. It says, even as, even if I agree with his position, the way he's presenting it, he's presenting it in such an insecure way, in such a confrontational way, that it becomes, if he doesn't allow critical scrutiny, or if he's willing, to, he's just trying to shout over it, Morgan and not answer his challenges, he's not willing to point out what's wrong with Pierce's argument, what's wrong with Pierce's questions, and then defend his own position without trying to interject emotion into it like this is a propaganda film you're not going to take our weapons you tyrants took our weapons and blah blah blah. you know it's it's like trying to stir up some emotional interest in people versus to present a rational argument which is devoid of emotion it doesn't depend on you how you feel about the argument the truth is evident whether you uh, people feel it's right or not whether they're emotional about it or not the truth still stands so uh, i think it's poor form to get so emotional especially when pierce hasn't even yet t- challenged him really he hasn't even presented ch- he's like it's almost like working himself up well, well, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because Pierce did challenge him. He already he already made an argument. Okay. It's you know it's uh, pissing a lot of people off. So I mean, it would be very hard to not be emotional. I, I agree. Okay, I'll, I'll agree with this. I I appreciate that he's that he has such conviction about his argument, and this affects his life. Like people taking away your right to protect yourself, it's obviously a very emotional issue. But you have to uh, your job when you're debating is to let the, the truth speak for itself. Yes, even I get emotional during when I'm debating, but uh, you really have to discipline yourself to say, look, 
even if I pre- present the information in a confrontational way, at the very least, I have to allow for the confrontation. If I don't allow for the confrontation, I mean, I don't allow for the dissent, the dissenting opinion, it says my position's weak. Like, I'm threatened by this position. He shouldn't be threatened by, um, by Pierce's, you know, absurd position to take away your right to defend yourself. He shouldn't be threatened by answering that in a rational way, even though it is a, the position, you know, demands almost an, an emotional reaction when you're saying, oh, you, the very audacity of you not letting me defend myself. But it, it comes off as a weak, insecure position when you can't just say, look, bring your challenges. Let me answer your arguments. Let me answer your challenges. Let me point, poke holes in your argument, right? Why should his, if his, if his position is so solid and it's right, it's functional, why should he be so threatened? Well, I was going to say because I think that he feels threatened because there's a, a you know, Democratic president who wouldn't mind, you know, signing, uh, you know, uh, legislation banning certain types of guns. So, so maybe he does feel insecure. Maybe he does feel threatened. I think, uh, yes, I think that's true. I think that's, that's very true. But again, in a debate, you have to be self-disciplined enough to present a reasonable argument, a rational argument that's devoid of the emotion of, I I don't, I don't think you should remove your, um, your expression, but you should control your expression. So for instance, I don't think you should remove the passion in your argument or the, uh, um, if you feel strong, you feel, you know, feel you're, you have a lot of conviction and you're uh, saying your words emphatically like this, fine. But still keep a reasonable head. Don't become a hothead and let the emotion overcome you so you can no longer rationally answer any critical scrutiny because that is a huge flaw in a lot of arguments where they're not willing to stand toe-to-toe with critical scrutiny. Not just beat it over the head with facts or beat it over the head with your position, but to answer the challenges of the critical scrutiny. I agree with what you're saying, um, but I feel a little bit like this isn't the best environment. Uh, it's not con- the best, it's not the best environment for a debate in that it's the Pierce Morgan show. And so I, I agree. It's no and because, you know, in this. right, there's no moderator. That's that's the number one problem they got no, is no moderator. They don't feel threatened in that respect. Uh, right, but it's it's almost like it's almost a more casual conversation. And you guys should be able to self-moderate as a, you know, as an adult. You should be able to self-restrict, to restrict yourself during a debate. But it really behooves you to have a moderator to keep people honest, to, to make them answer challenges to their positions. And to force people to present their point, right? To present their point in an affirmative, not saying, I don't believe this, but you should, for- the moderator should force each participant to state what their view is so the other person can argue it and challenge it. Santa Ana, my family was at the core on both sides starting that because Santa Ana came to take the guns at Gonzales, Texas. Pierce, don't try what your ancestors did before. Why don't you come to America? I'll take you out shooting. You can become an American and join the Republic. Okay. Another thing I hate about this is that he is making the American lifestyle seem like a gun nut lifestyle. Like uh, he's making it a cultural issue as if protecting your life is an American thing and nobody else cares about their life. Or, you know, shooting guns, going to the gun range and, you know, hanging out and having a beer and, uh, you know, shooting a turkey or going hunting is an American pastime. It's an American ideal and a cultural thing. Turning a principle into a cultural issue, it's almost like nationalism. And it, it's, it's such a turnoff to uh, – especially to an argument – that is that needs to be stripped of culture. That needs to be stripped of preferences, and just needs to have its essential components presented. Adding cultural things onto any argument is a is a huge no-no. I was no-no. just thinking. Uh, I mean, we were founded on slavery, and that was a huge part of our culture mm-hmm. back when uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were, were written. So to rely on you know cultural um, the cultural foundations of, of our of our country is just um, it's it's not a good argument. Yeah, so, and like we say, we had slavery. Like yeah. Shooting. If we could say, if we say, um, well, a part of our culture is shooting, well, part of our culture is slavery, like you said. So it, it automatically discounts the cultural argument that, yeah, you to, need, to be a good American or to be a good person, he's almost implying you need to be American and you need to shoot guns off. It's a, right. it's a Here's silly Morgan, thing. I guess um, should have said that. He should have. You finished? Yes, I am finished. You will not take my right. You go through background checks to get guns. He's finished. He wants to rebut. Pierce is waiting. This guy is, uh, you know... Where's the chance to rebut? Where's the chance to uh, hear the critical scrutiny? It, it, it's it's great that he's stating his position and he's stating it and, and he's being detailed about it. That's great. Maybe he's worried about being cut off by peers, but at some point he's got to say, "Look, bring the challenge. Let me pull coals in your argument." Because a good position or or, or a person who's going to manage their expectations well, you see, it's poor expectation management, is going to always say, "Look, here's the problem with your argument first. Here's the problem with your position first. He's got to undermine the bad argument. He's got to undermine the bad expectation first before he can introduce his competing expectation. What he's doing is just trying to lay 
his expectation on top of Pierce's without undermining Pierce's expectation, without undermining his position. So that's a, think, that's a no-no. In, do you think Pierce is, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, do you think Pierce is not managing his own expectations well? But they're both not. Yes. Finish? Pierce is, Pierce is, uh, Pierce comes off as more reasonable because you can see this, this guy we'll see in a second will be yelling and this guy will just be going off and off and off and Pierce will just be going, Alex, 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 calm down, Alex, calm down. I want to have a debate with you. So Pierce comes off way more rational. This guy, he makes this guy look like a lunatic, even though his tactics are, you'll see he uses some shady tactics and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But this guy isn't smart enough to even head those off because his own relationship management is bad. This is, this is basic relationship management 101. It's to tell people what not to do first. Before, before you tell them what to do. Because if you just tell them what to do, they always keep it in the back of their head. There's nothing wrong with my position. What he told me was just an option. It's just something else I can do in addition to what I'm already doing. But if you, have, but if you say what you're doing is wrong, well then when somebody tells you, hey, do this thing instead, it's more, much more appealing because you don't want to do the thing you're doing already. It's bad. It's wrong. It's dysfunctional. Right? It's immoral. It's unethical. It, whatever. But the point is, if you're pointing out what's wrong first, then they have more of an inch, uh, more of a reason to listen to your position why this is right. Are you commentators gonna s- give me any cues like, hey, keep going or let's let's move on? Let's keep going, man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're. I thought we were a team here. I thought we were a team working on this debate. I didn't. Know, I didn't want this to be a one man show. This is gonna be a one man show. I'm gonna cut you all out. No pay, and you're gone. <laughs> so let's no go. Pay. How about Prozac? You know the number one. Oh, that's the big sponsor, isn't it? Or that whole class of drugs. Let me ask you a question. Oh, well, got to cut that off, don't you? Don't want to talk about the U.S. number one cause of death is suicide now because they give people suicide mass murder pills. Your answers get more money. Okay. He's going crazy. Yeah, again, he may believe strongly or or he may be, he may strongly believe that, hey, it's a bad idea to give people Prozac. And I I agree it's a bad idea to give people Prozac. To medicate the problem instead of addressing the problem. They're, they're addressing the symptoms, not addressing the root cause of the problem. But the way he's presenting it, he's refusing the critical scrutiny. He's refusing the debate. He's refusing to, to, it's like he's bullying the point. He should make the point. He should make his point and then have Pierce respond. If he just yells over Pierce the whole time, he doesn't give Pierce a chance to talk. No chance for critical scrutiny. Yeah, at, at this point, he just, uh, he seems like he's off the handle. He's, uh. Yeah, he comes off as crazy because Pierce is like, hold on, let me rebut that or let me, let me say, state my right. position and then we'll, you, you rebut back. A kind of psychologist to put more crazy people on drugs and make them kill people, Pierce. Let's try and have a debate here. Yeah. Answer me this question. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of the same old script here, bud. It's fine, bud. How many gun murders were there in America last year? Do you know? Uh, there were about 11,458, and about 74% of those were gang-related gangbangers shooting each other. You get three and a half to 4,000. Okay, How question. many people died? Okay, see, so you can see what Pierce's tactic is. He wants to highlight the gun problem by just having the guy answer a simple question. Again, taking statistics out of context. This guy should have jumped on that and said, look. The problem is with your question. It's misleading. It's taking things out of context. He does, again, not poking a hole in the other guy's argument and say, this is why it's wrong. This is why your position is wrong. He's only yeah. saying, my position is right. But Instead of saying why, what? The reason why he can't say that is because he relies on statistics too. So he's not looking at the overall principle. So he, he's Yes, like, he's like, look, here's my, here's my gun advocate position. Here's my statistics. Right. And so he's trying to bully his position versus what he should be doing is, poking holes in Pierce's position. Why his position is the wrong position to take. From infections in hospitals, 197,000. That's right. How many gun murders were there in Britain? How many great white sharks? How many... Kill gun people murders. every year, but they're scared to swim. Right. How many gun murders were there in Britain? A very low amount. I already went over those How statistics. Many, you know? That was only a few hundred. No, no. How many gun murders? I actually actually did pull up the statistics. Here, let me pull them out right here. I figured you'd do that. Gun murders. Oh, wait. Last UK year. violent crime, capital of Europe, London no. Telegraph. Here, let me it's give you It's quite more. a simple question. Well, that's the oldest. Very that's the old, no, no, that's the oldest Perry Mason tactic to ask me some little factoid. Some of the little factoid. I already said earlier, We're talking about England a country. has a lot lower gun me, crime rate because you me, took all the guns. Let me try exactly But my you've point. got hordes of people burning down cities and beating old women's brains out every day. What a ridiculous They thing. arrest people in England if they defend themselves. That's on record. My God, you've got a total police state. Everybody's she fleeing that country it, because yeah. the old... He does. Uh, uh, but, you know, you're isolating little factoids. Uh, he does, but he, I mean, it's... Okay, he's trying to say it's, you're taking it out of context, but... Um, I don't think he does a really good job of it here because he doesn't challenge Pierce to respond to it. I mean, it's like you got to put the guy in a hole and make him answer to you. 
to make him defend his position. He's just strictly like letting Pierce attack. And then here's my position. Here's my position. When is he ever saying, Pierce, here's the problem with your position and let him respond to the challenge versus him trying to bully the, the uh, bully the point across. He, he should have, he should have Pierce answer his questions or see the rationale in his, the flaw in, in his argument. He should draw him out versus, hey, here's my position. Let's just butt heads with our positions. A silly way to debate. Well, you've had to flee here, bud. Why don't I'm you tell folks? It. Yeah, you fled here. Why don't you go back and face the charges for the hacking scandal? Honestly. Okay. So now he's pulling out some, some issue of uh, Pierce being deported, or I don't know what the story is. I didn't look it up. But. Yeah, this is, now this was, I think this is like a, a classic ad hominem because now he's, he's uh, trying to damage his character and it has really nothing to do yeah, with it. Yeah, it has him. nothing to do with the debate. It could be Hitler yeah. debating. Even if Hitler, who has bad character, is debating to say that your position is is wrong because you did something that, you know, has no bearing on the actual debate, whether your position is right or wrong. It, it's silly. It's childish. This question, how many... Why don't you get fired from the Daily Mirror for putting many, out fake stories? How You're a many, hatchet man of the New World Order. Okay. You're a hatchet man. And I want to say this right here. You think you're a tough guy? Have me back with a boxing ring in here, and I'll wear red, white, and blue, and you can wear your Jolly Roger. Okay. You know what? You, Let's try again. <laughs> so now he wants to challenge this guy to a boxing match. I mean... How, this guy's coming off as so insecure as like, look, I can't logically or rationally present my position in a debate. I'm so threatened by you that I want to beat you up now. I mean, he looks like a madman. He's coming off like a madman. How uh, many uh, gun murders were there? Oh, you know, best man? In Britain last year. Uh, how many uh, chimpanzees can dance on the head of a pin? Hmm. I already went over those statistics. Do you, do you know the answer? Uh, no, I don't. I, you said hundreds. It's very low. You, you said hundreds. Yes. It's actually 35. Well, the point is, you can against eleven thousand. Do, do you understand hey. the difference in eleven thousand? Yeah, England wants to ban knives yeah. now because tens yeah, of thousands yeah. are getting stabbed. Right. But do you understand the knives? difference? The knife doesn't say, kill people. Do you understand? The so he should see. Pierce is trying to hammer his point and ignore what he's saying, but he should stick to his point and make Pierce answer. He sh- that's a challenge he should present, and he should just keep asking until Pierce answers. He should call Pierce out on that point, but instead he's just <laughs> shouting him out. It's you got to point at the flaws in the argumentation and the way they're presenting the argument to show that their argument is irrational. I feel that Piers Morgan, um, you know, he's like, it was actually 35, not hundreds, like you said. So, like, just in, in a way, it's, you know, in the second presidential debate, you know, when um, they were, Mitt Romney and Obama were arguing over, like, a semantic thing in, mm-hmm. in transcripts. I know not every student listening, but um, it's just, like, focusing on the semantics instead of the actual argument. And I feel a lot of people rely on that. I feel blue realize on that. Yeah. Okay, continue. I, I just said that blue out of the blue because uh, <laughs> I thought you fell asleep. Let's Do understand you understand you're not going to pull on America's heartstrings. They know your script, mm-hmm. okay? You're not going to get our guns. By the way, you guys always say, we just want to take the semi-autos, okay, and all this other stuff. When semi-autos aren't even, uh, mm-hmm. rifles aren't even used, but in a fraction of the crimes, you can mm-hmm. pull those numbers up, okay? Uh, well, no, 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 hold which, on. Let me ask you one question. Which weapon was predominantly used in the Aurora movie theater shooting? Uh, M4 AR-15 variant. So it was a semi-automatic yes, assault rifle. Again, okay. But Next statistically, question. it's Next, very, very Next, low. That was. The, do you agree it was the single biggest shooting in the history of America in terms of people hit by a shooter? Do, do you know that? No, I believe that there were others. No, no, it's, some other no, shootings no, it's about a, over 30. No, no, this was the single biggest Mass shooting. Well, listen, you're just but, going. No, there have been bombings of Wall me, Street. Let me ask you a second. Are we going to listen? Why can't the let pilots have firearms? Question, Alex, we trust them to fly the planes. Alex, you've had a lot to say. No, my point is question. the Second Amendment is sacrosanct, do you know, and you're not getting do you, it. Do you know which weapon was used in the Oregon shopping mall mass shooting recently? I understand that people. Uh, who are mentally ill on all the serotonin you know, reuptake you know inhibitors weapon, this who play the question, these shoot 'em up games Alex, want to go out and do this. Alex, because there's criminals, I don't Alex, lose my rights, Alex, Pierce. Alex, because there's criminals, Alex, I don't lose my rights. Just answer the question. Yeah. Do you know what the weapon used was? Listen, let me ask you a question. No, no, answer. I've got this. Okay. <laughs> Again, Pierce is going by statistics here. This is a silly argument. Look at Even if Pierce was right, and let's say, um, 500,000 or 50, 11,000 people die by gun deaths or, or, or whatever the number was. Or if it was 50, regardless if it was 50 or 500. It's the principle that matters, which is ultimately, do I have the right to defend myself? Whether it's with a knife, whether it's with a bat, whether it's with a gun, the point is the same. So by arguing the semantics of the issue, you get mer- mired in this semantical debate 
the problem with semantical debates is the situation is always going to change. Like I said, technology is going to advance. We're not going to just be using guns, uh, you know, maybe 50 years from now. We'll have a totally different weapon, a totally different weapon system. So now we'll be arguing the semantics of a new weapon, a new technology. These are silly debates unless you understand the, the, the overarching principle behind the position versus the semantic or, or situational aspect of the position. Meaning, uh, are we abounding assault rifles or semi automatic weapons versus are we abandoning the right to defend yourself? They should really, or uh, Alex should really isolate the issue and not just make it a gun issue so that it's much stronger if you present the principle behind the issue, which is the right to defend yourself against yeah, tyrannical right governments. Defend yourself. I think you should reframe it in saying what do, you need, what do people need to, to be safe or what do people need to... Um, exactly. Uh, versus yeah, so just like, make it a gun issue. It's because safer, like, It's a safer in Britain or wherever he's from. Is it safer there? Or yes, is it safer that's there? that's exactly the way he needs to frame it, not gun statistics. He's going to lose if he tries to make it a gun statistics issue. He has to make it a safety issue, which is really what it ultimately boils down to. The reason why we have the right to bear arms is to protect our lives, not to just to have guns. This is what this guy is not getting, and this is the argument he's not presenting, which he really should be harping on. Pierce makes it the point makes the point to say, you know, the last few um, mass murder rampages rampages in the United States were based on all involved the same semi-automatic weapon, but um, Alex could make the point, could focus on instead of like the actual gun used, like the reason behind the shooting in the first place. Maybe talk about you know the mental issues and the reasons why the men that went on these shootings, why they did it. Yeah, and we could also talk about again. He's brought up other issues because again, he's trying to isolate these uh, deaths by um, instrument, death by gun, versus uh, suicides, right? That's things of those natures, which all add to the death that the death count. So if he's just isolating one statistic, it's dishonest. It doesn't cover the whole problem, and this is yeah. what he should be harping on to undermine yeah. Pierce's they, argument. They say people die more of smoking than yeah. Like, I mean, uh, smoking is much is worse. much more of a problem than gu- than right. guns. Uh, it creates other health issues. It co- creates other environmental issues. It, it's a huge problem, but yet again, the way we present it depends on how we deal with it. It's smoking. It's right. It doesn't seem like a bad thing. You just smoke a cigarette. But again, this drain on the economy, people in the hospital, um, the cancers. Uh, Death, etc., heart and lung problems. But again, the way it's presented, the way it's presented. The shootings are a lot more immediate and a lot more graphic. Yeah, so people are like, uh, you know, people are so into, uh, you know, instant gratification or, you know, something instant, an ins- instantaneous consequence, instantaneous response that they can only see an inch in front of their, in their faces. So they miss the big picture because they're so busy, busy looking at the tree in front of them, which is the tree in front of them in this case is. So many people were shot in this, uh, you know, in this uh, Aurora shooting massacre. So it's now gun control is the, you know, huge scary issue. Fear mongering. The FBI I'm statistics that, listen, no, no. that I the think, so-called semi that you talk let's about. Let's take a break. Let me come back. Again, you're not going to get the guns. Let me come back. Try and <laughs> answer my question. Yeah, all you're okay. going to do is sit there and play little factoid questions. Overall crime's yeah, gone up to 20%. Facts. It's about facts. It's all, yep, it's about facts. No. He didn't challenge us. He's just, again, trying to bully the argument. You're not going to take our guns. <laughs> Pierce is arguing, it's about facts. So by just saying it's about facts, he's making the other guy look like a lunatic because he's just saying a stating a position in the, you know, it's, uh, you're not taking my guns. Sounds like a crazy man. Right now with Alex Jones, a man says I should be deported for my stand on guns. So Alex, here's how this is going to work, and it's entirely down to you. I'm going to ask you some questions. In the spirit of a proper debate, and you've had a lot to say so far on the show, a lot of it, aimed at me, which is fine. But I want you to try and answer the questions. It's a proper debate, okay? I'm not trying to trip you no, up. No, it's not a debate. You're running the okay. show. You bring in okay. your victims up front. Actually, actually to, no. Look, you got your little note cards. Yeah. Okay. I just gave you FBI statistics fine. that violent Alex, crime Alex, and gun crime Alex. is down over 20%. Alex, let me just ask you And this. you want to go to little factoids. No, they're not little Anybody factoids. Anybody can pull those up. Listen. Do you know what... Do you have a bodyguard? Alex. Why do you have bodyguards? I don't have a bodyguard. Yeah, I've seen you on the news with them. Don't, don't you want to protect bodyguard. your wife from hoodlums or you want to call the police? Let me ask you this question. Why does Diane Feinstein until 60 Alex. minutes that she okay. plans Alex. to try Alex. to take Mr. and Mrs. America's guns. Stop talking over me. You Let guys me. want to disarm all of America. No, I don't. Diane Feinstein's no, bill does I don't. gun confiscation. No, let me clarify for you. You don't seem to understand. First you register, then you confiscate. It's no. always done the same. Here's what the campaign on the Well, here, give me your little cue cards no. and I'll answer your questions what for you. What was the weapon used at Sandy Hook? I've already gone over that and already answered it for we you. We haven't talked about Sandy Hook. No, uh, again, what I, was the weapon? it's a two two three M4. 
Right. Again, but it's statistically, the, right. they're using very low percentage of, ma- of right. shootings, but period. Then, all you but see, you guys, all you people seeing pattern, wouldn't go swimming because the movie Jaws, the biggest, even though great white Alex, sharks kill five people Alex, a year. Alex, you're trying to scare people. Let me say something. There's no metal shark in the water. The same type of weapon was used in the last yeah, three that's right. mass shootings. And Hitler used semi-autos to kill people. Why would you and not? so did Mao. Why would you? Why is the government arming with the you, teeth against us? Alex, I don't What know. about Fast and Furious? Alex. Why do our government ship guns into down. Mexico? Alex. To blame the Second Amendment? Let's have a debate. A false flag? Alex. To blame the I Second accused, Amendment? I get accused. Why they blow up Building Alex, 7 down the street here Alex, in New York? I get accused when I get you guys on of talking over you of being rude. I'm trying to be civil. Yeah. Right? You've got to try and answer some of the questions, right? Here's my issue for you. Why do people need, civilians, need an AR-15 type assault rifle? Okay, I already said them? statistically they're using no, a very low the amount of the crimes. That's an FBI fact. Been, Again, these guys are battling statistics, all a losing battle when you don't see the bigger picture, um, the right to protect yourself. Right? I mean, is it how fast is the weapon? How fast is a semi-automatic? What does it mean to be semi-automatic? I mean, so many semantics involved in this argument. If I throw a knife, if I, th- if I can throw a knife super fast, like multiple knives super fast, that's almost like an automatic weapon, right? I mean, there's so many semantical issues involved in this debate that they're not addressing and – or I'm sorry, that they're only focusing on these semantic issues and not understanding, again, you got to crystallize your position. you really got to remove the bullshit and the excess from your position. That's why the critical scrutiny is so huge. It's so important. It's not a gun issue. It's a self-preservation issue. It's a protection issue. Do I have the right to protect myself, to protect my life, to protect my property, etc.? It's silly that Pierce would ask, you know, what brands – it, yeah, it's model is the as if, gun. okay, um, well, you could say, you know, uh, somebody was stabbed with this brand of Ginsu knife. Does that mean we ban all Ginsu knives? It's, again, a silly argument. But the company, the gun company could just change the model. Yeah, number. there's so many well, ways that this could be uh, undercut. I, I can see, I can see, it's not so much of the model, it's the, it's the type of. Yeah, he's saying this is an automatic of, weapon, so. Yeah, like, like, because I see where he's going with this, because what he's saying is, like, what's to say. People shouldn't have bazookas or, or you know, so, something that's... Uh, right, but here's the thing. Once we cross the line and say, look, you have the right to defend yourself with arms, with weapons, basically, is what they're saying. You can use weapons. It, really, it should include bazookas. Because once you give a right to a guy to kill some, another person threatening him, anything goes. It's not like the guy killing you is trying to play by the rules. He, he's trying to kill you. He's trying to take your life. Anything should go at that point. Now, we don't give people, like, nuclear weapons or access to nuclear weapons, but really... If you want to get uh, technical, they really should because they don't really see that this this issue is a it's – such, it's such a bigger issue than just a gun. It's such a bigger issue. It is to say how important is my life and how important is it to protect my life and what freedom should I have to protect it. Uh, and really, there's a responsibility of the issue attached to this that they're not covering either because let's say I have a nuclear weapon and I, some guy's uh, neighboring – Country's coming at me, and I just blow it up. Well, there's nuclear fallout. I'm affecting people. I'm going to affect the environment, the economy. It's, there's going to be so many detrimental effects from this bomb. I, I would tell you what, if I was, uh, if I were Alex Jones, I would say, why would people want an AR-15? It's because if there's a tyrannical government, I want the AR-15, and not. Yeah, but you got to say again with the issue I just mentioned. It's an accountability issue because you have the bomb. You you've affected people's lives uh, and uh, the uh, your food supply. It's going to be irradiated. Um, same with a, with a gun, right? If you have an automatic weapon, let's say you fire in a crowd, you may kill a bad guy, but you, you kill other people as well. So there's a there's always a responsibility issue attached to what you do. There's always a, a consequence to what you do, especially if you kill somebody. Uh, their family could be their family's gonna, could be affected. Their family is going to be affected. Their friends might want to get revenge. Their relatives might want to get revenge. So there's you start this whole chain of consequences. So uh, it's really even. The right to protect yourself is really a symptomatic problem because it's telling us that people are at such a point where they're willing to kill themselves, where they're uh, kill, to kill other people. They're, people are infringing on their rights so much, infringing on their, uh, they're endangering their life so much that they now feel threatened to the point where they need to kill that person threatening them. That is a huge issue. That says that says that there's a huge problem with our relationships in general, not just a gun issue. You know, you could like I said, you could stab somebody with a knife who's threatening you, and they'd still take their life and still cause a lot of a lot of uh, other problems as a result of that. So, again, to just isolate it to weapons, and that's what Pierce is trying to do. Look, was, oh, an automatic weapon was used in this crime, therefore we should have banned automatic weapons. Stupid argument. But again, Alex's response to that, it, it's a silly way to rebut the issue because he doesn't understand the, the underlying flaw or the underlying principle that's being addressed in this issue. And that's why he's arguing back with his own facts and 
semantical well, issues. I think he was the uh, the wrong man. He was definitely the wrong man for the job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in a sense, since uh, Pierce is is a poor debater and this guy's a poor debater, it's like it's almost like they're they're. Uh, Pierce's presentation is so poor. It's a typical liberal uh, agenda to isolate facts that support your position when it's they're, they're, it's a dishonest use of facts. And this guy comes off as a nut, a, a crazy gun nut conservative who uh, it, it comes off equally insane um, and uses the first attempt at a character assassination. And you'll see Pierce flips that on him and uses it too in a much more successful attempt. We'll see in a second. Yeah. In the last three mass shootings. Yes. Why? I'll tell you people? why. Because they advertise it in the media. Anybody knows that if somebody jumps off the Empire State's building, they put cops up there the next day because copycats come to do it again. The media hypes and hypes and hypes. And that's all the Don't just commit suicide. Do why do people Don't commit suicide them? by killing a bunch of kids. And here's the gun to use because it's the one the U.S. Army uses. Why do people need them? They need them to protect us from the number one killer in history. Government, the 20th century university uh, study out of Hawaii, killed 292 million people. It's called democide. Google it, folks. Do you believe everyone in Demo-side. America? Should everyone in America yes. therefore have, yes. a, have an AR-15 if they want one? Statistically, where there's more guns, there's lower crime. The highest crime is in Bloomberg. Uh, you know, but you have the most controlled guns areas. of any of the 23 richest countries in the world. And you have 20, 12. Well, America was born gun on guns and whiskey. Right. But it's true guns. we're a violent society. Right. So but said that America has uh, the most guns. This guy instantly. America, we're a violent society. Guns and whiskey. Making it a cultural issue. But, uh, totally undermines his position. They're, like, they're focusing on violence. Let's say there was no violence. And let's say there's a tyrannical government, there's no violence, people are not living in peace. Is it? I mean, they're not happy with their lives right. uh, because they're under oppression. Is it really peace? The trains run on time. Hitler's trains ran on time, right? Is it really yeah, a peaceful situation? Yeah, time, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just thinking, there's only one degree of death. To, and to you know, make the arguments about all the degrees of you know, weapons is silly because you could kill someone with just with a handgun, so... You can't kill someone anymore with a semi-automatic. Yeah, but they're trying to imply you could kill more people. As if, again, it's 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 neglecting the value of life. It's saying that this one person's life is worth less than these fifteen people's lives over here. As if you, it, it's that simple to go. Well, fifteen lives are better than you know. It's better to save fifteen lives than this one life over here. What if this one life over here is Einstein? Uh, what if this one life over here is uh, you know Leonardo da Vinci? So to just say you we're just weighing lives against lives, you know, a number of lives, it's a silly issue. It's a, it's a complete misread, a, a devaluation of life itself to make that, you know, that kind of argument. Well, you're going to kill less people, so it's better. Killing is bad enough in itself. And, by the way, this guy makes the argument about um, the military having the most weapons, and we already have a culture where, you know, we ingratiate people into the military, they train, and we, we really, they're training to kill other people. Right? They're training to kill people. They're not training to uh, be buddies with them. They're, they're teaching people to kill and passing it off as uh, self-defense or uh, uh, service to your country, when really we know what's going on there. They're teaching people how to shoot people effectively, how to kill them, how to stab them effectively, how to use your bayonet effectively to kill the enemy. We use euphemisms right. all the time to, to, make, to take away the accountability. The feeling of uh, the sense of accountability. We used to be, uh, we used to have a secretary of war. Now we have a secretary of defense. Like that, like that whole name change suddenly makes it so much better to, it's more palatable to swallow it. And on top of that, it, these are just cultural barriers anyway between the countries. There's not, I mean, there's fundamentally, we're all part of the same, you know, we're all part of the same world. So, I mean, just because someone is culturally in a different, a yeah, border, a different country, are, uh... it's, Alex Jones, what he's trying to do is just, he's just trying to uh, paint Piers Morgan as a red coat. Yes. A red so, well, the British are coming. Just, yeah, he's like trying to appeal to people's emotions. He's, you know, he's live, but so far as... Uh, 1776 is coming back again. I'll fight you, you red coats. Knives kill three times more. Voted. Have you seen the FBI numbers? Knives, bats, rocks kill, 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 kill many, many Let's times talk, more. Alex, Let's talk it's about not the, the gun. It's not the rock. It's not the right. knife. When a mother chops Alex, her kids up with a cleaver because she's on serotonin. Alex, tell me why I'm wrong. Why don't you want to get AR-15. rid of the drugs? Because they're half your sponsors? No, stick to the subject. America's <laughs> number one cause of unnatural death now is suicide. Okay. Alex, not not automobile accident, not cancer. Not, you listen. accuse me of attacking the Second Amendment of the Constitution. I want to get people off pills that the insert says will Alex, make you commit suicide Alex, and kill people. Alex, 
Let's get about to the second. I want to blame Alex. the real <laughs> culprit. Alex. Suicide pills. Alex. Mass murder pills. Okay, let me ask you one question. Your belief in this, I'm wrong. First time anybody's ever heard this, by the way. Your belief in this, I'm wrong, is that under the Second Amendment, your real concern is that you will be overrun by a tyrannical regime, either from somewhere else. Yeah, highway checkpoints. Look at Mexico. Total gun ban for the citizens. Highest crime rate in the world. 57,000 people dead the last five years. Total gun ban for the citizens. But you, you'll Switzerland make... has the lowest crime rate Alex, in Europe. Alex, Your country Alex, has the highest. Alex, we have 35 gun murders a year. You have 11,000. You you people Alex, get their brains. It's the higher crime Alex, rate. Let me ask Violent you. crime is higher. On this specific... It's brains. Alex, it's people. I'm trying to get inside your brain. If you punch me right brain. now, it'd be not your fist, Alex, but your brain that did Alex, it. let me get inside your brain. Okay. Okay? I'm serious. You have a very, very big platform. You air, I think, on 63 networks. No, no, country. that Wikipedia is like 10 years old. I'm on over 140 okay. stations, XM. Millions of Americans hear you. Over a million and half visitors to InfoWars.com right. today. We're going to have the statistics <laughs> posted right okay. now. Okay. InfoWars.com. Who do you Who's believe is behind 9-11? Oh, I absolutely know. I have the police on. Okay. Now, Kyrus is going in for the coup de grace. He says, who do you believe is behind 9-11? <laughs> this guy's <is> so dumb. <laughs> Well, okay, he's already in the conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His site is Infowars.com. But he doesn't realize that Pierce, by bringing up this other issue, is painting this guy as a maniac. And he's already hung himself with his, you know, his irrational okay, presentation. I mentioned, like, Predator Jones from the very beginning. Predator what? <laughs> yeah, Predator Jones. Oh, Predator Jones, right. Yeah, so if you said Predator Jones, I knew this guy was, was loose. So already, he's <laughs> Pierce is cementing his grave uh, by pulling up this peripheral issue it doesn't have anything to do with the debate. It's a low tactic. It's just like the other guy referring to Pierce as being deported and why was he deported? I mean, <laughs> these distracting issues. It's it, it shows such an insecure position. CNN saying get back, they're going to blow up seven. I have BBC reporting. Do you believe as Jeff, I have the proof. I heard them on CBS Who? Radio. Oh, Alex. They announced they blew up the towers on CBS Radio. Who do you New Yorkers. Pierce also wants him to say it. <laughs> he wants him to say it. So it will be certified loony in front of the pub the U.S. public. This guy might have had a rational position, but now because of his other ideological views and beliefs, you, you immediately discount them. You go, this guy has no integrity now. So I haven't heard it. Alex, who do you they believe? They blew up Building 7. Alex, who do you believe was behind it? The American government. Criminal elements of the military industrial complex, the same ones that staged Gulf of Tonkin, the same ones that staged Operation, right. the mass shootings of Operation right. Gladio. Right. Ooh, do you, the CIA do you don't mean, like this Alex, right Alex, now. Do you mean that President Bush and his administration were behind 9-11? <laughs> I mean that even mainstream news reported that the hijackers were ordered to be allowed into the United States. Michael Springman, the head of the visa department, blew the whistle right. on that. So the Bush administration was part of a conspiracy. Well, he murder, said never let us tolerate to murder, murder, to murder, to murder um, I can speak in this accent as well. Yeah. The government Hitler firebombed his own Reichstag mm -hmm. years to bring in martial law in Germany April 27th, 1933. Governments have staged terror attacks throughout history or allowed terrorists to attack as a pretext to invade and enslave the many populations. I, prob I probably own more than 50 firearms. Many of them have increased in value two, three, or even four times. I sleep very comfortably uh, outside Austin, okay. Texas, knowing Alex. that I can defend my family. Okay, Alex Jones. Infowars.com. This is the man who wants to deport me from the country for wanting to get no, rid no. of it's, it's, it's to point out you're a foreigner, a red coat, here telling us what to do. Whatever. Go back to where they took the guns if you don't like it. The communist... <laughs> okay. That's the end of the debate. You can see the, the guy looks like a lunatic now because he asked about 9-11 and uh, he's saying the government planned it. Um, I've heard so many competing theories about 9-11, but it's, it's, even if he has his view, just to, to allow this to come in and to answer and to air his views and not realize how this is bearing on the debate, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Even if he has a rational position, to allow this to go into so many different directions without first establishing his position and undermining Pierce's position. Insanity. Insanity. Well, I mean, he doesn't have the training because he has a radio show where he talks generally right. uh, by himself. And he states his position. I don't think he's used to, like, defending, him, defending, defending himself. Defending himself. I'm sure he has other guests on. I'm sure he's uh, yeah. had disagreements. Well, yeah, like everybody who agrees with him. Uh, Chewy. Um, I, I mean, when I first watched it, I felt like this guy knew he was going on CNN, he 
knew a lot of people were watching it, and he kind of just wanted to throw out as much. He wanted to get his talking points out. Yeah, it's basically advertising as as long as he could before being cut off. He's you know mentioning his own website and right. stuff. Um, I, I don't even think he was looking for a debate. He didn't really allow a debate. He didn't um, follow any you know standard protocol for you know an orderly debate. It's just basically him just throwing out as many statistics, as many tactics, as many um, you know, mocking the and criticizing the other the other guy in Pierce Morgan. Right. Just, Throwing as many like uh, weapons as possible, right. it's like a all out like fireworks type of thing. <laughs> well, here's the, my uh, last barrage. Here they go. I'm gonna light all the fireworks at once. Exactly. That's what it seemed like to me. So, uh, who won the debate? I don't think either party won the debate. I think they both demonstrated. Uh, you know, I'm not satisfied with the outcome of this debate because I agree with in I agree in principle with Alex's side that you shouldn't take the guns, but not for the reasons he's stating. So. I definitely don't think he proved his position. And also, uh, Pierce's position is obviously, uh, has so many flaws in it. And again, there are, he, he's pulling up this issue about 9-11 to paint his opponent as a lunatic rather than address the issue, which is why, why he believes gun control is relevant or why we shouldn't have, uh, why we should have these, why he feels these weapons should be allowed or why they shouldn't be allowed. He doesn't solidly address that. So who, who do you think influenced the audience more? Maybe I think Pierce influenced the audience more. Um, two reasons. I think uh, the people who are on Alex's side are going to be on Alex's side, regardless. Um, I don't think that people, especially watching CNN, uh, the liberals media, uh, the liberals media, the media is liberal. The liberal is media and the media is liberal by <laughs> definition. That is that is the default position of people growing up. They, they are liberals from birth because... The liberal is the hippie position. The liberal is the give me all freedom without any accountability. Con- the conservative position is um, just kind of like the opposite of that, which is the restriction, the restriction, the restriction, but without without accounting for um, the, gr- the group, the community. The liberal is concerned for the community, whereas the conservative is, is the doggy dog world of capitalism, right? Everybody pulls themselves up by their own bootstraps. So it's appealing – but ultimately, both philosophies fail because we need to care about the community, but we also have to have accountability to the community. The conservatives have stressed um, accountability, but they don't stress the community. So ultimately, it's useless to just you know to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But there's a, now you're competing with your community. You're you're an enemy of your community. You become an enemy of your community. Uh, capitalism breeds these enemies. This competitive mindset, whereas the hippies are all about just community, 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 but no personal accountability. Like the government should just take care of us all, right? So that it's imp- it's totally impractical. Both positions are impractical. So the liberal media is impractical, and it, it it appeals to a childish mentality. And most people, I think, fancy themselves intellectuals, especially in this day and age, fancy themselves as quote unquote civilized, and will will uh, glom onto Pierce's uh, pseudo intellectual presentation, this refined, dignified, uh, reasonable, so so called reasonable uh, presentation. So I think that in that sense. He comes off as way more reasonable. So I think he'll influence people more. Even though I don't agree with his position. Well, Man's Academy should have been there to debate Piers Morgan. We should have been on there. Yeah, I definitely would have had a moderator in there. And I definitely would have made sure that the timeline would have been cut off. Like I, I would have said, look, if you're going to post this, I want you to post this debate in its entirety. Not just – maybe you could post a snippet of it on the website but also link to it and say, here, post the rest of it in its entirety. We want people to have access to the full debate. It's it's just as bad as censorship just to just show a little bit of a debate versus you know you can isolate things take them out of, take them out of context versus showing the full debate which is what they need to do. Fifteen Plus, minutes isn't enough time. And then you could have plugged in uh, plug manhood one hundred one dot com. Thank you guys for this wonderful presentation of Manhood Academy critical analysis of a debate. We'll see you next time.